Hello everyone and welcome to episode 23 of the Badger Podcast. It's June 14th, 2016, 11.29 p.m. And, um, well, more uh, details have uh, come up since this uh, horrible massacre. We know more about what actually happened, more about the background of the killer. We know that he was a closet case. The people at the club, a lot of the club goers actually recognized him actually. Like, some of the survivors recognized him. When, I mean, they didn't recognize him at the time, I'm pretty sure, right? But now what's going on, they were freaking out, you know? But after all this happened, and they look at the news, and look at the pictures, they're like, wait a minute, I've seen that motherfucker. Well, it turns out he's also had accounts on certain gay hookup apps and dating apps, so there you have it. He was a gay man who hated the fact that he was gay, probably because, I don't know, maybe he had been taught his whole life that gays are evil and disgusting. So, you know, some people, they're taught something and they never question it, and it manifests into hatred for himself and hatred for other people. And, you know, he says he aligns himself with ISIS, and ISIS says, yes, he's one of us. Well, whether or not he's officially one of them, ISIS basically just confirmed that they have insecure gay men working with them and for them. So, congrats, ISIS. You just shot yourself in the foot with that one. Now, how's that going to go with your, uh, your radical Islamist friends? That you're all a bunch of secret queers who just want to blow up the world. That's quite the image, huh? Yeah, this whole tragedy has been fucked up. The fact that someone has so much hatred for who they are, that they go to people who are happy and proud and open about who they are, and they decide, well, if I can't be happy with who I am, then neither can any of you. That, that is a very frightening thought like that exists. There are there's a lot of people who are who have beliefs, whether they're political or religious or both, usually both. And they their beliefs are that being gay is immoral and it's sin in in some extreme cases or you know, in the case of certain religions it's something, you know, that is warranted of an execution and that gays need to be put to death or gays need to repent or gays are going to hell. These people, they believe that and they believe it to the T. They are grown men who've never questioned what they've been taught as children. When you grow up, you're so, it doesn't mean you have to throw away everything you've learned. you got to question a lot of it. And for a grown man to not question the bullshit that gets viewed from childhood, come on. But there are people that believe that, and they're gay themselves, but they don't want to admit it. Or if they do admit it, they keep it a secret. And then they go on, and they are the biggest homophobes. Because they hate gay people, but they are gay people. They are part of the group that they hate. And that is a very dangerous combination when you mix it with religious radicalism and terrorist organizations. And whether or not he officially worked for ISIS is irrelevant to me. ISIS says they that he is one of them. I don't. I don't doubt it. I don't question it. You know what? They. Won't, I don't. To me, it, there's no reason for me to question it. It's not like. It's not like we're talking about him being with the Pope or something. We're talking about him being with a very violent group. And if they want to claim him, fine. Just remember, Isis, he was a closet case. So, what does that say about y'all? Are you all a bunch of closet cases too? You know, you get put the guns down. You get stop reading that medieval garbage. And maybe you can accept that you too are gay. And that you too like to suck dick inside of your caves 
you just don't want the world to know, but guess what? The only ones that care are people like you. We don't care if you're gay. We just don't want you to be gay and then say that being gay is wrong and kill people for being gay. It's absolutely ridiculous. I guess that's the best way to, you know, kind of cope with this is just say that ISIS is gay. And no, it's not bashing gay people. But you know what? The people that are in ISIS, the people that sympathize with ISIS, the people who follow the same beliefs as ISIS, to them being gay is like one of the worst things ever. So you call them gay, you're like, you're insulting them in a way that not even a Christian, a hardcore Christian could be insulted. It's ridiculous. And again, I'm very tired of the media's hypocrisy where Christianity is constantly bashed homophobia and Islam is never bashed because that would be Islamophobic. No. Here's the thing, also. When a closeted gay Christian, when a closeted Christian man, you know, who's gay and is very homophobic, these people are a piece of shit, but you know what? They're not the ones shoot, they don't go and shoot people and kill people for being gay. All they, what happens with them, they're just caught filleting somebody through a glory home adventure. You know? Religious radicals of any religion are dangerous. Especially if even the moderateness of the religion, even the basic book teachings are violent, then it's even worse. But the bottom line is that faith should be a personal choice. Not even your children should have to follow your faith, because they are individuals. So if you have a certain belief, you keep that to yourself. You don't bring that to anybody. You definitely don't bring that with violence to anybody, but you don't bring it to anybody at all. If people want to believe what you do, then let them come to you. And that goes for everybody. Every faith out there. Even the most truly peaceful ones. There's always going to be that one crazy who... Who is the, the very definition of irony. Who says, Oh, my God is so loving, and if you don't follow him, then you will die. I will kill you. Because he's so loving and peaceful. That is the bare definition of irony. Moving on. It's uh eventually this tragedy has hit very close to home. This killer had actually planned to attack Disney World. He had actually gone to the Disney parks prior and scanned around looking for, you know, targets before deciding to go and manifest his internalized self-hatred and homophobia and kill people at a gay nightclub. But he had actually gone to Disney World with ill intentions. You imagine that? One of my cousins was there. He was down there with her friend visiting. I don't believe her god my goddaughter her daughter was with her because I haven't I didn't see her name in the picture she posted, but she could have been because she takes her to Disney very often. Maybe she was, just I don't think she was though, she wouldn't post pictures, but so if this if he would have gone a different direction, there is a possibility I could have lost something very dear to me. And we already lost way too many people. We lost fifty individuals who I don't know, I don't never heard of them before until this event happens, but they had no reason to ever die. And um yeah, would you have imagined that the fatality rate, the fe sorry, the fatality in total, if you would have actually gone to the theme parks? Do you imagine the catastrophe? Like, it's just insane that someone like this, with this mindset and this capability, exists. And we are supposed to be able to feel safe in this country. I mean, if you're in a bad neighborhood, that's one thing, but if you're in Disney World, you should have no reason to think you're going to die. And if you're going to die in Disney World, it better be because a goddamn ride crashes, not because of some insane lunatic who got an 
a measurable amount of issues with this life. My cousin actually told me that she went she went to Epcot on Sunday, the day that all this happened, and they had to go through metal detectors. I never in my life have I had to go through a metal detector in Disney Park. And it shouldn't have to be like that. The happiest place on earth should not should be a place of magic, not you know, tragedy. And, but anyway, this attack didn't happen in Disney World, thank God. But it did happen. It's still happening in the place where lots of innocent people were. And it happened in the situation where people were killed for their sexuality by a self hating gay Muslim. Regardless of how religious he was, you gotta remember that just from the background that, it hurt, that tells people that gays will be punished. Now, his own father has spoken and said that gays will be punished by God, but that man has no right in punishing gays. Now, don't take this as a decent statement. It's a better statement than saying let's kill gay people, but it's still a statement of homophobia, because it implies that there's anything to punish people for. It is still homophobia, so it is definitely the more safe kind of homophobia. And that's the kind of homophobia that I hope is the only one we ever have to deal with. Where people hate us, but they don't wish violence on us. That's horrible too, but I would rather deal that with that than people who are going to go and trying to shoot up people who are dancing at a club, enjoying their night. People who were supposed to go there, have a couple of drinks, hang out with some friends, and then go home and look back on the memories with years to come. They are no longer going to do that. And the survivors are going to look at that not with happiness, but with trauma. The trauma that these people are going through, that the survivors are going through, is immeasurable. In, immeasurable. And I'm tired of politicians trying to make this about gun control. This isn't about gun control. And uh, I don't think this arming law-abiding citizens is the way to handle it. A situation like this, I think that's actually very counterproductive. Now, that doesn't mean I don't think that there should ever be any kind of gun control. I do agree that certain guns should be extremely restricted, but the but the argument is irrelevant at this point because he would have gotten that he probably would have gotten that weapon one way or another. We're talking about a man who goes and kills people. Violently, you think he's gonna give a shit if something is illegal? It may be illegal, but it still exists, and if it exists, it's accessible. I'm just gonna put that out there. Saying that guns should be banned because a criminal illegally uses a gun, or whether he obtained it or not legally, he still used it for the wrong purpose. Saying that guns should be banned for that is like saying that because a 17 year old killed people while driving drunk, that alcohol should be banned. We all know how well prohibition wins. But it's not about the control, it's not about all of that. It's about hatred. It's about brainwashing. It's about people not be. people. Not having the capacity to come to terms with being who they are, and instead manifesting that into violence. Like there's lots of gay people out there who wish they weren't gay or you know are in st strong denial, but you don't see them going to harm others. Maybe they harm themselves, but they shouldn't do either. But still, it's very rare for something like this to happen. This was a hate crime. This was a terrorist act. And this was just a bloody injustice in the face of humanity. And this this, is, this podcast is actually a sequel to the last one. There's it's more of a follow up. But in some ways, the other podcast from before it was a sequel to the other one because it followed up in the same city with a similar circumstance. The city of Orlando has had the worst weekend of its life. 
the people there are probably living in total fear right now. Especially at the thought of a copycat, because we are in a society right now where people want their 15 minutes of fame, even if it means dying. Even if it's their last 15 minutes, they want that fame. And psychos and hateful bigots out there with nothing to lose in their lives because their lives are miserable. They hate themselves because they're probably secretly gay, or they hate themselves because they've done shit in the past. That's fucked up, and now they take it out on the people. Whatever reason, people like this have nothing to lose. They might as well, they probably plan to commit suicide because their lives are so, you know, they're so miserable with their lives, but then they say, wait, I want to go down the history books. Let me go kill a bunch of innocent people in the process, and that is one of the most terrifying things out there. And it's the same kind of mentality that leads to school shootings. School shootings aren't caused by bullying, that's a bunch of horseshit. The Columbine shooters did not shoot people who bullied them, they shot people who barely knew him or ever spoke to them. It's, it's the same thing applies, it's not, it's not, you know, people who, it's not because of the guns, it's because of these people who who have nothing to lose in their lives, but they attack people who do. People who actually have bright futures. People who actually have career goals. Who aren't ashamed of being gay. And probably went through hell growing up, you know, in a homophobic society. But look, we're, you know, we're in a society that's been progressing in terms of gay rights. We're in a society that's been progressing in terms of marriage equality. We're in a society that is, we're in a society that's the river that starts off slow, but it keeps going faster and faster and faster. There's, like, the gay rights movement has been going through rapids right now. They've been going through waterfalls of, boom, legalized here, boom, gay marriage legalized here, boom, laws passed, too, you know. But then there is also, there are these people who are trying to build dams. And stop the progress, stop the flow, stop heading downstream. They want to build a dam, they want to stop everything, and they want progress to stop. And they want nothing but a flood of chaos. We can't allow, we can't allow that. We gotta, you know what? If they want to try to build a dam and stop us from moving forward into society, then I say push. All with gallons and gallons of force and break that shit and move on stronger than ever before. And to all the hardcore Christians, see, it's like I said, the common theme here is people who take their religions too seriously. Regardless of how religious this guy was, he comes from a, from a culture that has religion that is taken too seriously. He follow he supported this Islamic terrorist group that takes his religion. Far too fucking seriously, so that that it all ties up to that. But regardless, there's Christians in this, in, in this society, in this country, and maybe in other countries too. But there, trust me, there is no country with it, as much crazy Christians as the United States of America. There are Christians in this country who call themselves Christians and claim to be, you know, such great people who think that the fact that this happened. Who think that this was justice, that this is what gay people had coming. People like these deserve to be beaten. Because that is a disgusting thing to say to the victims of a terrorist attack like this. That's like those fucking morons at Westboro Baptist Church who go and pick at the, the funerals of soldiers. Or the people that say that God called 9-11 because we had been sinning, so we needed 9-11 to happen. These people, these radical moronic Christians, need to go with these radical moronic Muslims, and they all need to have a fun little fight to the death. Because we do not need people like this in our society. I'm sorry, but if you take your religion too seriously, when well, you don't give a crap about human lives, 
then I don't think anyone should give a crap about your life. And I say that with the utmost sincerity. If you look at it, victims of a tragedy, look at who they decided to sleep with, who were kind of, you know, what they wear, you know, their sexuality in general and everything that entail that it entails. If you look at people like that who die in a tragedy, and instead of, you know, having some a shred of humanity and saying, Oh my god, you know, I don't really support what a lot of these people do, but my god, this was a tragedy. Made them may they rest in peace and condole to some family. If you do, if you look at that people and instead of saying that, you say, Well, maybe if they weren't queer, this wouldn't have happened. They got what they deserve. If you say something like that, then you are a piece of shit. And you know what? It's a shame that it isn't people like that that are dying. It's a shame that it isn't people with mentalities like that that are gone from this earth. Instead, we got people who've done nothing wrong who have gone for no reason. The very fact that they exist and that they are an unconventional group of people, they are dead. The very fact that they're not straight, they are dead. For the very fact that they were in a place where they should feel safe in a society that, despite progressing, is still not exactly the friendliest place for gays, despite, you know, a place like that, because they were in a place where they can escape the doldrums of life and maybe dance or drink for a few hours, who cares? Just have a good time and let their care go away. Because they were in a place like that where they should never imagine anything like this to happen, where they should escape the stupid fucking people out there who hold signs and condemn them for who they are. In a place like that where they should never have to think about it, where they should drink their worries away and dance the night away, because they happen to be there, they are gone. And yet we have people who still want to push their stupid religious agenda on the public. Who still want to say, this is what gays had coming to them. The Lord is what's right with the world. You know what, people like that, I hope one day, you, uh, I hope one day you have a realization of how shitty you are. That you can look back and fix your life, because if not, you're going to die a very miserable person. And you will die. We all will die. But if you live your life as decent as you can, no matter how young you die, you will live a far, far more meaningful life than the miserable old cunt who dies at 90 years old hating people because of bullshit that he was taught and never decided to question. Question everything. Question your beliefs. Question your politicians that you follow. I'm not saying that they're all wrong. I'm just saying fucking question it. Because, what, because if it's wrong, you gotta go follow what's right. And if it's right, keep following the right path. This tragedy has been senseless. It's been unnecessary. Just like every other terrorist attack. Just like every other hate crime unneeded should never have happened and think of all the great lives from every goddamn situation like this every person that was killed for their race for their sexuality for their gender for their nationality for their religion for their culture for whatever fucking reason for nothing think about all those people think about the lives they had promised to them that were taken away and they're gone not just the people that died in Orlando Everybody from the beginning of time who was killed for no reason. Think about all the great people we lost. And the sad, saddest, one of the saddest things is that 30 years from now, this is going to go down in the history books, and most, almost everybody who will know of this tragedy, either the people who were alive at the time or the younger people who haven't been born on yet, but will learn about this in school or read about it on Wikipedia in the future or watch a documentary about it 
Most of these people, they will forever know the name of the killer. But the names of the victims will be forgotten. They will just be numbers. That's how it is. More, almost everybody knows the name of Adolf Hitler. But how many people can name more than 15, more than 5 specific Holocaust victims? How many, how many people, everyone knows the name, or even if they don't know the name, they know the specific two people involved in Columbine. Dylan Clebo and Eric Harris. If you don't know those names, you still know who they are. Otherwise, you'd be living under a rock. But how many people know the names of the victims that were shot? These people are the ones, the martyrs who died and are forgotten by name, only because they, they're only remembered because they died. Instead, we remember the piece of shit that it should have never been born. And that, to me, is one of the, the... That is the true secret tragedy among all tragedies. This has been episode 23 of the Badger Podcast. And thanks for listening.